sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Dave's Tackle Box. It's Sunday, the 19th of January, 2014. I nearly said 13 then. Brilliant. We have got rather a lot to get through tonight. Rather a lot. And um, I'll just give you a little taster before we play the titles. I've got a list here, see? Quite a long list, too. We're going to be looking... We've got some more footage from Smoke Without Fire of the BBC Vape Meets last weekend. So there's some stuff we haven't seen yet and a, a, an edit that Andy's done, um, which will be live on YouTube, but not until after this show. Ha <laughs> uh, We're going to be having a look at the Dr. Farsalino study that he's getting donations together for. A few talking points cropping up around that over the last few days especially. Um, Clive Bates has been quite busy on his blog over the last couple of days and we've got well, perhaps an amusing story to a large extent. Uh, on Thursday, Vivian Redding, who I've got to be honest I'd never heard of, but she's the Vice President of the EU Commission, so she's pretty powerful. Um, did a Google Hangout thing, uh, in they they called it hashtag EU Deb Eight, and straight away I was concerned when I see like the Vice President of the European Commission talking in tech speak. I start to get mistrustful. Well, we're, we're just going to reflect on that a little bit, and uh, I'll just show you very quickly. We've got a little poll running. Uh, I, if you're watching this live. We've got a little poll running um, to see whether you thought uh, that she was lying during that debate um, or uh, or whether she just didn't know what she was on about. Um, I can um, very quickly now post into the chat for those that are watching live a link to that poll. And if you want to vote, and we'll have a look at the end towards the end of the show and see how that's getting on. Um, so there's that. There's another thunderclap happening. There's a couple actually, but there's one that particularly that stood out that I wanted to give a mention. The US Surgeon General issued a report in the last few days uh, with somebody on Twitter read it through actually. I didn't because it's quite long and it uses big words and stuff. But they uh, they mentioned, uh, they made a comment on Twitter which made me have a look for a particular paragraph which I've found. So I want to show that to you as well because that's quite interesting. The European, the Free Vaping Initiative, EFVI, is something that came to my attention in the last week or so. I want to have a little look at what they're up to as well in there and uh, and show you a little bit to do with that. And there's other little bits and bobs. Uh, the Jeff, uh, Jeff, the Philip Benyon. <laughs> so Jeff Benyon. <laughs> it was only a matter of time before somebody confused the two of them. They are very alike. <laughs> I know that not. <laughs> With, with my apologies to Philip Benyon. <laughs> um, the MEP, uh, the Lib Dem MEP for the West Midlands area. I interviewed him last week. I told you last week that I'd lost the footage. Well, God, I found it again. So uh, it's just a little short clip I've put together that I had to do, did a, a rather rapid edit. And we can have a look at that too. Uh, before we have a look at Andy's edit of some of the stuff that was sent in to him last week. So quite a lot to be getting on with. We'll start with the titles.
And right, with so much to get through, we'd better get cracking. Of course, the first thing I need to do is introduce my guests. Uh, uh, so first of all, I'm going to say, hello, Chris, how you doing? Hello, Dave. I've done you a lower third and everything. Hang on. Hey, whoa. <laughs> Don't you just love technology? How you doing, Chris? I'm doing and pet. And in Geordie, that means I'm not doing too badly. Brilliant. We've been having some Skype challenges, haven't we? <laughs> you're a little bit crackly. Skype is there to challenge us. It does appear to be so. You're a little bit crackly, but we can hear you. We can hear what you're saying. And that's the I'm main thing. I'm a little bit crackly. <laughs> so I get to know which. <laughs> <laughs> and, right, and in the blue corner, we have... Dave, David, Davy Malik. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to call me, it doesn't matter. What out, mate? What out, <laughs> as they say locally, I believe, where you're from. <laughs> so I did you a lower third too. There's no favouritism on this show. So you guys, uh, loads of stuff for us to opine upon this evening. So that was quite sort of poetic, wasn't it? Um, let's start me... with, with the no? Dr. Farsalinos no. thing. Sorry, Chris, what was that? I said, I don't know what it means, but it sounds good. A pine. No, me neither. So uh, I've got a, I've, this list of, I've got a list of words here. I don't know what they mean, but they sound good. So we'll work those in during the evening. Dr. Farsalinos, uh, this was mentioned uh, sort of um, uh, in a lot of detail on Thursday night. So we're not going to go into uh, what Dr. Effie is currently up to. Uh, no. We know that he is collecting money to... Um, to perform some uh, anonymous and independent study of e-liquids on the market, uh, looking for a particular chemical, and we don't know what that chemical is. Um, however, there's been uh, there's been a bit of discussion, mostly on UK vapors, I have to say, but I have picked it up on Twitter a little bit as well, and uh, people have been uh, sort of wondering really whether we the consumers should be donating for this and i think it's a valid question to ask actually i mean the the, the, the point is shouldn't the vendors be doing this why does it need us to be involved now chris i know you've got some uh, sort of fairly strong opinions on this i have to... yeah shoot um i formed an opinion immediately that dr farsalinos mentioned it um because i had a look straight away at the fundraising site and there was eight hundred and seventy dollars i believe was the amount right um within the account and they were looking for twenty three thousand dollars and i thought that's one hell of a discrepancy there bear in mind it was the first day which yeah you know not not too bad but I knew what he was saying, and I knew what he was saying about the industry. He wanted the industry to uh, put towards us, which he clarified later. But my thought was, and I, I'll take the blame for this, if we, the vapor, put a little bit in, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever, and we were seen to do that because that site is very transparent as to, it doesn't necessarily give names. You know, you can be anonymous, but the amounts are very clear. And I thought, right, if we, the vapor, add to that, then industry has very little choice but to follow. Because if anything, we're shaming them into the act. And Dr. Farsalinos quite quickly came on board and said, you know, yes, he wants industry to pay for it. But I was looking at the, excuse me, I've got a watery eye tonight for some reason. Um, he was quite clear, you know, that he wanted industry. And I looked at the figures and we were getting mighty close to the 10,000 mark. And it's now surpassed that. Um, Delighted to see. It has. I've just popped it up on the screen, which you won't be able to see yet, Chris. And we're at ten nine six two US dollars, so nearly eleven which grand. Excellent. Now, IMSA have um, donated three thousand, which again, Doctor Farsalinos has been extremely open about. So that leaves ten thousand left, and that to me is what the industry should provide. 
and I'm told I'm not the smaller vendors yeah of course they should provide as well but it doesn't have to be huge amounts but there are some very large vendors that have um, bases in the UK and in the US um, and worldwide I don't know about the big vendors in the US but if they started contributing that figure would be reached very very quickly yeah I've, I've got to agree apparent. completely agree That's with you because uh, it's a lot of money, isn't it, for us as individual consumers, but uh, right. for, for the industry, it's it's pennies, isn't it, really? It, it's, it's nothing for them. But it's not just this study I've got to think about, we all have to think about, it's future ones as well. You know, they've been awfully reticent to sit back and do very little, and I'm sorry, Benders, I shouldn't be saying this about you, but there's not a lot being done. And I have to say, it's in your interest to get this done. You know, we're going to buy the juice from you. We're not going to blow and buy it unless we know that the juice is safe. And we've all had this worry since we started vaping. Not since Dr. Farsalino spoke up. But for the last five years, I've said to myself, the only thing I don't know is about the flavouring. And here's the opportunity to finally know those answers and that's why I'm so passionate about this. That's a point I was going to make as well there Kat is that it's mm. good that Dr. Farsalinos is looking at the negative side possible negative side of vaping as well and yes vendors, it's, it's all well and good that vendors will send out a little leaflet saying what's going on in the EU and all that kind of stuff but they should be helping to fund this kind of research to see what's in the liquid so that we know it is completely safe to use and yes I completely agree with what you're saying that the big vendors should be donating to it and we will get to that amount just like that if they would just help out so if we had a message on this then uh, what what would it be sum it up Chris a message for who and what would that message be get your finger out to the industry in general there are manufacturers out there the US especially, we know there are, um, the vendors who can afford to put a reasonable amount in, get that amount in there. Um, get that research going, not in a month's time, but now. It's not a long, um, Dr. Farsley also said, it's to believe it won't take long to do. A few Come weeks, on. I think he said, didn't he? Yeah. Get cracking here. Let's see that amount, you know, rise tomorrow. And yep. let's see this research get done. That's what I would say to them. Anything you want to add to or that, else baby? I'll be on your teal. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing I can add to that because it's, it's absolutely bang on. Get doing it now. Um, is there any chance we can get a link into chat for the, for the fundraiser? Absolutely. You know oh, I bet me, we could. I, I bet Chris has got it memorised. <laughs> and, and on the off chance that she hasn't, uh, the VTTV Facebook page is a good place to be or follow any of us on Twitter because we don't generally keep quiet about these things that we, uh, we're we passionate about, do we? <laughs> no, and I'm extremely passionate about this because I say, um, and I think you agree, Dave, and Davey agrees, it's the one concern we've all had we all know about the PG, we know about the VG, we know about the nicotine, but we don't know 100% about the flavours. Yeah, there are yeah. MSDS, is that the right term, the sheets available for all the separate ingredients, but we don't know what happens when you put those together. Dr. F is going to give us the answers on that, and it's vital we know this. It's well, vital. Yeah. I mean, it could absolutely. save the industry, Dave. Just, just, just to kind of wrap this bit up. I mean, just my own thoughts on it is, um, you know, it was a point that was made on uh, UK vapors, and um, you know, it's right that the vendors should have done this, but the fact that they haven't means that you know we should take some responsibility for it. And and the the, the biggest risk that, as far as I'm concerned, is that if we don't find it somebody that wants these things banned will find it 
Yeah. Right. And it'll be, you know, I think it just reflects better on our industry, uh, our community, should I say, and the industry, uh, okay. if um, if we're seen to keep our own house in order. So, okay. Um, spot on. Okay. Uh, just before we go to a break, um, which isn't that far off, I do want to very quickly uh, mention this EFVI organization now it's it stands for the european free vaping initiative which is i grant you a bit of a gobful um but they have a website which i shall put up on the screen now um european free vaping initiative uh i, I did have a look on facebook to see uh who was behind this um but i, I don't know whether you can make out the detail on there but there's already 2100 likes on the facebook page so the word i think is getting out there but these guys have identified that uh if you can get enough support and i just clicked the wrong button there if you can get enough support uh uh through uh for uh, into the EU data collection system, uh, then basically you can force uh, a debate and a review of policy. And it's it's something the EU have got. And, and I'm not that up on it, but I read enough to realise that if we all go through and sign up for this, and if we reach the thresholds necessary, uh, then it forces people to start looking at it in the EU Parliament. Um, so what, if the best place, the way to do this and have a look at what it's all about is to go to their website, which is efvi.eu. And they're basically calling for uh, vapors to be left alone. I'll just read you the first paragraph of their manifesto. It says, we the vapors of Europe and supporters of the subject demand electronic cigarettes and its related produ products, regardless of its nicotine content, to be classified as general purpose recreational products through legislation once and for all and strictly not as medicinal tobacco or any other kind of products that would limit or impair the vapor's access to and use of electronic cigarettes and related products. So basically, you can summarise the whole thing by saying, hands off, which is a sentiment I agree with. Um, if you click through uh, the right links there, it'll take you to uh, this site, uh, which I'll get on screen, uh, which is uh, the an online collection system this this is basically parts this is owned by the the eu this site it's it actually takes you to ec.europa.eu uh citizens initiative uh program and basically you have to sign up uh to say that you support uh the the the, the manifesto that you've read and the reason i've got this particular thing on screen is the way it works is you have to get at least seven EU member states to reach their threshold and the threshold seems to be calculated on the number of citizens in each EU state so if I hover my mouse over uh, Britain here the United Kingdom uh, you can see that a thousand and thirteen people have have gone through this process and signed up to support this uh, but we need in the UK alone to reach a threshold of fifty four thousand seven hundred and fifty people that is a lot. 54,750. Um, just going around, it's done by population. So in Ireland, they need they have a threshold of 9,000. But I know that I know I know 53 Irish vapors who so they don't seem to be getting the message. So we've, uh, we, you know, let, let, let's let's do our best uh, to, to support this. Uh, France, look, 377 and they need 55,500. Uh, some countries are getting the message more than others. And if, as I flick around here, uh, Hungary have got 912. Uh, what was the British one again? 1,013. Mm. Uh, so, and their, their uh, threshold is like a third of ours. And um, it's a long way to go. Um, an awful long way to go. We were one point something percent of the way there for the UK. Um, so... I don't know whether we'll make that or not, but uh, the rate at which people are signing up for it doesn't look that great to me. So uh, if anybody uh, wants to tweet and push this around Facebook, it's the EFVI. It's worth doing. 
it's worth doing i did it uh, during the week I did, I did it on a train in switzerland on a 3g dongle so it ain't hard um did, have you looked at that at all guys yeah, yeah. can i just make I've a point here as well it's not just us vapors who need to sign this thing it's getting your friends and family and everyone who is affected by you vaping now get them to sign it as well i mean apparently there are 1.5 1.7 million vapors in the uk who wouldn't be aware of this make them aware of it if you see someone vaping in the street tell them get on there and sign it i think you make a really valid point there dave it's it, you know i mean it's it, this is about eu citizens that want to see a change not vapors exactly so you yeah. you know legitimately uh your friends and family uh if they agree with it that, 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 that what's happening is wrong then uh then they, they should they should this is like I say, it's, it's a big number, 54,000, uh, and it will take some doing, but it, it should be possible. It should be possible if, if enough people know about it. Um, Yet again, I'm going to interrupt you there, Dave, and sure. say, come on, vendors, send something out with every order, and people will soon get to hear about it. I mean, I received an order um, I put in on Friday. I'm not going to say who from. Uh, but there was nothing, you know, there was just the usual card and how to be, etc. But nothing about any of the campaigns going on at the moment. Get your finger out, get the word spread, or you don't have a business anymore. Simple as. Exactly, absolutely. There's a theme developing here with, with Chris's input tonight. Isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But he, I mean, let's face it. You're dead right. You're, de you're dead right. Um, it, it's. Uh, I, I, I don't use that many vendors. I'm terrible. You know what I'm like. I, I know what I like, and I tend to stick to it. Um, but it's clear that people still aren't fully aware. And um, there's there's a woman who lives down the road. Who, you know, is vaping and every. She she she, she, she was asking uh, questions through my partner Fiona. She was asking. Um, uh, tips on mixing and stuff and uh, I got chatting uh, at new, on New Year's Eve it was and they haven't got a clue you know they're buying these things and they're not getting the message from the people they're buying from that, 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 that there's any kind of threat at all you know so so yeah anyway okay it's probably time isn't it for us to take our first break by now because I think we it's were a little late starting and it's just totally thrown me so uh, we'll take our I'm first break like I talk too much. oh I, I, I wasn't going to say that <laughs> yeah, <that's why>. <laughs> <laughs> Might have thought it, but I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> Cloud Nine Vaping, sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back. Okay, so uh, we were ju just uh, having a, an editorial meeting there, weren't we? Production meeting. And uh, what we're going to yeah. <laughs> what we're going to do next is show the BBC footage. So I've got two VTs. I've got like one really short, hastily edited rubbish one, and then we've got the one I did. No, that's the other way around. Uh, and then we've got like the proper smoke without fire 
Andy edited thing. So what I'm going to do first uh, is I'm going to show the little bit of a clip. Uh, when we were at Birmingham last week, uh, I filmed an interview with Jeff Benyon. I've done it again. <laughs> with Philip Benyon, who is the Lib Dem MEP for the West Midlands, who came along to support us. And uh, I thought I lost the footage, but I haven't lost the footage. I found it on the card just before I deleted it, luckily. Uh, so I have actually managed to make a couple of minutes out of this. Uh, enjoy this and see you in two minutes and a few seconds. I'm Philip Benyon. I'm member of the European Parliament for the West Midlands for the Liberal Democrats. I've come along to support you uh, in your uh, efforts to raise the awareness of the of the issue of e-cigarettes and particularly that the legislation that uh, has just been agreed between the Parliament and the uh, and the Council in Trilogue is no by no means perfect as it leaves an awful lot to desire. Uh, you're making this uh, clear in your protest and I've come along to support you. The positive issue is that we've kept it out of the grasp of medical regulations, of, of medicine regulations. Uh, at least they're going to be uh, regulated as products, as commercial uh, consumer products, not as medicines. Uh, that is a big achievement considering the forces that were ranged against us that wanted these products uh, regulated as medicines. So this, we have to say this is a big achievement. Where we have a real problem still is firstly the refillables. Uh, why are we not um, going to regulate the product as it is now, why, are we, why do we want to be so uh, prescriptive in legislating how these products will be delivered? I think uh, as we've got a good technology that people are using now, we should allow those technologies and not, and not ban them. Uh, the second point is uh, we probably didn't get quite high enough on the strengths that were, were allowed. Uh, but it could have been a lot worse. You've got to remember that a lot of people were, 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 were pushing for three milligrams, I think it is, or um, and uh, there at two was it some people were pushing for two but I think a lot of people were pushing for three so and, and this is probably weaker weaker than a silk cut um, what we've actually got is something that for most people I think will be a reasonable strength but for heavy smokers probably is still a little bit lower than the strengths we would have liked so we've got to try and see if we can try and still change some of this I think it's probably too late we're going to probably have to start from scratch but uh, we'll still be on side with you for the ch changes that you want to make and I'll be here to help you uh, to try to, to, to revisit this, this, this situation as soon as we can and try and get a better deal. Sorry about the uh, pause there. I was trying to click the little headphones so we didn't get an echo and I kept missing. <laughs> and I'm only halfway down my first point. Um, right, yes, so that was a Philip Benyon. Uh, and, and as you can see, the guy is uh, broadly supportive. I have to say, I think he's missed some of the details and I'm not convinced that he really gets exactly what's got us so incensed. Um, but he can see that we are <laughs> incensed. Um, and he thinks that's wrong and he thinks what's happening is unjust and therefore he's going to continue to support us. Uh, obviously, you know, he's a politician, so he was defending, uh, you know, the, the progress that, that, that they had made. You know, he wasn't sure whether it would, they wanted two or three milligram and, and what have you. But, you know, the, the important stuff stands. There's a good soundbite in there as well, wasn't there, about, uh, you know, that's that's weaker than a silk cup. <laughs> <laughs> so bless him for that I mean um, he, he, I don't want to talk too much specifically about Chris Davis um, but but there's um, I think I think uh, for the support we had initially uh, Philip Bennion there was one of our the, the, the first supporters that came on board along with Rebecca Taylor and Chris Davis they haven't all now moved on to something more interesting in their political careers uh, Rebecca Taylor, Philip Benyon and a lot of other uh, Lib Dem MEPs and Conservative MEPs are, and UKIP and, and a bunch of others across Europe, the European colleagues are still not going to accept this. So it ain't over. I mean, continue doing all the things that we were doing. Um, just, just to make sure. But I think um, 
you're going to like this next bit VT that I've got. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I, I have to issue a small disclaimer first thing. Uh, right, Andy got absolutely inundated with footage and still photographs, which is great. It's exactly what we wanted. And they're all going to be used to some extent uh, in the Smoke Without Fire project. But they're not all in this clip, because otherwise it would have been a documentary on its own, uh, as opposed to a segment about the BBC vape meat stuff. So uh, I saw this uh, for the first time just about an hour before we went on air, and I've watched it twice already, because uh, I thought it was ace. Um, I hope you're going to think the same. Are you guys excited? Are you excited, Dan? Can't wait. So, shall, no, shall I wait? Now I've built it up, shall I put it back ten minutes? So, <laughs> yeah, go on then. Get on with it. Uh, that, that we'll be lynched. I think we better roll it, hadn't we? So uh, this is the latest instalment of Smoke Without Fire. There's a real danger that MEPs who voted for tight controls on e-cigs force them to go through a whole load of regulatory bodies that will be expensive are playing into the hands of the big pharmaceutical or the big tobacco companies. And of course, they're best placed, they have the resources to um, comply with any regulatory measures and testing requirements that may be introduced. Well, hello, good evening. It uh, is Wednesday, the 18th of December, almost a full year since the Tobacco Products Directive was first presented in Brussels. And today, agreement was reached on the text of the Tobacco Products Directive and mostly about e-cigs. There's hypocrisy, double standards and confusion about this whole issue. You know, where do you place e-cigs? They're, they're a game changer, they're a new product. We haven't come across them before. Um, do we classify them as a medicinal product? Do we classify them as a, as a recreational drug like alcohol or indeed like cigarettes? Now I just think uh, uh, that time will tell. You know, the debate will move on. And what we shouldn't be doing at the moment is putting unnecessary restrictions in the way of a product which could lead to the saving of hundreds of thousands of lives every year and a dramatic improvement in the health of conventional cigarette users. Let's please not throw the baby out with the bathwater. After the European Parliament went to such great lengths to make sure that they wouldn't be regulated as medicines they still can be. Member states that weren't going to have a go at making the medicines are going to be forced into uh, adopting draconian regulations that they would not otherwise have been. I do not see how this is a win for anybody. Sav, I'm sure Chad's got something to say on that one before Dave comes in. Uh, Whip it up 69 says we've been well and truly screwed. I think we've been sold out <clears throat> is my take on that. Uh, it's it, it basically says, OK, we won't agree to it now. We'll agree to it without any scrutiny or any further votes in the future. That'll do, thanks. Watching the, the tweets last night and this morning uh, um, from people like Chris Davis claiming a victory, what planet is the guy on? It is not a bloody victory, is it? Anything above 2 mil is banned. Anything above 20 milligrams is banned and any bottle bigger than 10 mils is banned and they said there was to be no ban in many ways this could end up being worse than bloody medical regulation what we've currently got you could speculate that it could be quite a good result for the tobacco companies i, I do get the feeling that this might have been constructed in order to kill e-cigs without being seen to kill e-cigs and the best way we can fight it is by getting out there and making our protest heard in as many places as we possibly can. Right, what's going on here today? Well, we're having a meeting outside BBC offices just to raise awareness for e-cigs and the proposed e-cig ban that the EU are trying to enforce. Here we are at BBC Vape Meet in Nottingham. Like 25 vapors have come down to actually support E6. Throughout Europe, vapors are gathering outside local television and radio stations for vape meat. Incredible, that isn't it? We're vaping about two years. Uh, I'm here to fight for my right to vape. 
This is what we are here for. E6 save lives and we need to make sure people know. That has stopped me smoking and I'm very pleased with it. I'm very happy with it. It's doing us no harm. It's doing nobody else any harm. Please leave me alone. <laughs> exactly, well there you are, there's a message for every MEP and every legislator everywhere. Leave us alone. It is just basically a protest for me about my um, right to actually choose nicotine, how I want to actually take nicotine. We basically want to have the right to choose. The government will always say there's not a ban, but it's a de facto ban because they want to regulate the e-liquids down to a ridiculous strength. <laughs> Cigarettes kill people, you know. This, as far as I'm aware, and millions of people around the world actually are aware, this doesn't kill anybody. We are vapors and we're not going to go away, and we're not going to go away quietly. So we're making as much noise as we can on Twitter, Facebook, sending emails, calling the newsroom, saying we are here, come and talk to us. <laughs> Today is actually two years to the day that I've been tobacco free and I'm here to do my bit to ensure that one, I can be still tobacco free in two years time and more than that, that other people have the option to be tobacco free. We need to make ourselves heard and we need to do it any way we can and this is nationwide trying to get the BBC to notice us and make our voices known to them from our side of it rather than someone sat in Parliament saying well vapors believe and understand that this that doesn't work. Today in Cardiff has been a pretty much of a good success and um, we've been met by um, head of security that passed our press release on to the press office. Um, somebody from the press office come down by all accounts they're going to be inviting me back when they have a debate on it um, he didn't say whether or not that would be a TV uh, debate or a radio debate. We've also had the support from the security team allowing us to actually enter onto the BBC site as well to do various bits and pieces. In Manchester, they were asked to leave uh, the vicinity. Um, so I immediately got on the phone to Manchester to find out what was happening and going on. It's in regards to the protest outside your building at the moment. The, the vaping crowd that they has moved on. Are you filming this, sir? I am doing, yes. I think one will have to ask you to leave. Manchester sublet the site from uh, a different landlord, so BBC don't own the site. Uh, so what has happened is the landlord has said we want them off site uh, because obviously they haven't had uh, permission from us to protest. Um, so they've gone ahead and they've removed off site to not be uh, sort of taken to court for trespassing. <laughs> Uh, as, as oddly as that sounds, that's what can happen. This is going to start the ball rolling because it's time that we actually get listened to by people who are supposed to represent us, who are supposed to actually be the voice of us in Parliament, you know, in sort of like the European Parliament. This is time for them to start listening. Most people who have written to or emailed or run their MPs. I mean, for instance, right now in Birmingham, there's, a, there's an MEP with the vapours in Birmingham. I, I think it's important to stand up for vapours and the attempt by the EU Parliament to attempt to, to effectively ban e-cigarettes. I think it's ludicrous interference, and I think it's an interference in the EU that we don't need, and it's unnecessary. The major lobby against e-cigarettes is the tobacco lobby. Yeah. And I wonder why. I think, I think that argument says it all, and I think that the, everyone should be very suspicious of why the tobacco lobby wants to ban e-cigarettes. As, as from what we can see, from what we can hear today, it seems to be the only proven method of giving up cigarettes. The government basically wants us to go back to cigarettes, uh, cause harm to our bodies, whereas vaporing, it's not, that, it's not bad for us as, as smoking. Uh, my opinion is they don't want us to buy because they're losing too much tax money. It's about us people of Great Britain and the world just saying, look, come and talk to us and find out from our perspective, not what someone said our perspective is. Manchester BBC have asked the people to move away. Surely they should embrace the fact that there are people that want to speak about a very important issue for people who want to stay on nicotine, don't want to smoke. This is about me standing up and saying, actually, I want something that I know is not harming me. 
This for me is a solution and it's about time that people started listening. I see today as the first of many and I see today as the beginning and it's certainly not the end. And welcome back. And, uh, well, what do you think, guys? Uh, uh, did you see that? Did you nick it out the Dropbox before we went live? I haven't seen no. that before. That was absolutely amazing. Right, so you didn't get to see that in sync with the audio, unfortunately. Well, uh, uh, I'm told that it's actually already loaded to YouTube, timed to be public at 10pm. So uh, as soon as we sign off here, it'll be available on YouTube if anybody wants to watch it uh, through again. And for you, Pear, it's in the Dropbox, in the Dave K folder. <laughs> um, again, credit to Andy. I've just got one comment to make before I throw it to you guys to see if you've got any thoughts. And there were a couple of people there thanking Andy for including their footage um, in, in in that edit. And uh, I, Andy is thanking you for sending it to him. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, that, that, that's uh, it, it's nice. I mean, there were some of mine in there, and it's lovely, it's lovely to, to see it sort of edited up and, and looking good like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, 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 don't forget, guys, you know, Andy's thanking you, we're thanking you, all of us are thanking you for, for, for capturing these moments, uh, because mm -hmm. it's going to make a difference, I reckon. Thoughts, Chris? I mean, so many people on the day felt disheartened. When there was only a few people turned up and i kept saying because i was coordinating it all on twitter and i could see what a huge impact this was having that there were messages coming from all over the country and europe and i was thinking this can't you can't say this is a failure this is going to be one hell of a success it's good the impact's going to roll on and on and on and that's exactly what it appears to be doing yeah there was a comment in there wasn't there from somebody in cardiff saying you know this will get the ball rolling and i think it has got the ball rolling i think uh i think the fact that that some meps uh came out to support us and tell us what they think um you know uh, i won't say which MP, mep it was but uh it's fairly easy to oh dear my little macbook thing has just gone to sleep crashed we're going to need that in a minute. Well, I'll sort that during the break. <laughs> um, uh, that, that uh, you know, a little bit of civil de disobedience can go a long way. And I'm afraid I can't change the camera shot now because the Mac has just died. I can do this thing. Um, so um, I've totally lost my thread on that. Yeah, a little bit of civil disobedience will go a long way. The ideas are still sort of coming thick and fast on what we should be doing next. Uh, the Weatherspoons idea uh, sounds like a good one. Um, Davey, have you got anything particularly you want to add? Yeah, I want to add that I've had a lot of people saying to me they've never been politically active or anything like that until this sort of thing has come up. And I think it's fantastic that people are now starting to take um, the initiative, they're getting involved in things and they now start to realise that your MPs and MEPs are there to work for you and I think this is what is causing the MPs and the MEPs to actually turn around and say you know what, we've actually got some work to do now Yeah Sorry, I was just hitting my computer <laughs> <laughs> Now's a good time to take our second break, we'll be back straight after this I 
I've ever and I've ever Alexa best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk. iVeber and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. And welcome back. Computer's working now. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, so uh, let's draw a line under the BBC vape meat thing. Cause I, there's a very real danger you could just talk for hours about that because it was such a good day. Uh, mm. But no, there are other things that we need to look at. I was sitting there earlier uh, on Twitter, as I often do, and I saw a tweet go past uh, with a link to a report by the US surgeon general now i don't read all of those because there aren't enough hours in the day that that kind of tweet but uh, the comment that accompanied it was uh, something about uh, advertising uh, actually being beneficial to health advertising of e-cigs being beneficial to health uh, so i got a hold of that link and if I put it up on the screen now, and maybe this will work and maybe it won't. No, it won't. Because when this PC crashed, desktop presenter went down. So please bear with me one second uh, whilst I do this. I know, let's have one of these. Yes, it still hasn't uh, come back to life. I do apologise for this. Um, somewhere there's a shortcut, but I don't know where it is. So how can I do this? Okay, let me uh, just read it to you. <laughs> uh, here we go. Right, so it's, it's actually a report entitled The Health Consequences of Smoking 50 Years of Progress. A report of the Surgeon General, and that's from the US. And this is the executive summary document, and it goes to about 20-odd pages. It's dated just simply 2014, so uh, it can't be more than a few weeks old. Um, and it goes on and on. And if you've ever read any of these sort of uh, documents, they, they you know, especially to do with e-cigs or smoking and, and uh, smoking-related health, they all pretty much read the same, but some are slanted slightly different than others and what have you. So it goes on about the problems of uh, health problems of smoking. It's, uh, it mentions electronic cigarettes. But if you uh, get a copy of this document and scroll all the way down to page 17 of it, uh, they're talking about uh, re restrictions for new nicotine products and it's easier said than done to find this uh, there is in here talking about electronic cigarettes um, and they're commenting on the fact that some of the big tobacco companies are involved in electronic cigarettes and everything but page 17 in the first paragraph it's, it's actually under a, a point number four if you're interested in finding this for yourself uh, it's talking about uh, how the advertising and marketing of these new products should be regulated. But then it goes on to say, even assuming that electronic cigarettes could be sufficiently safe to the users and offer net public health benefits, there are significant questions about the manner in which they should be regulated. Um, 
However, the promotion of electronic cigarettes and other innovative tobacco products is much more likely to be beneficial in an environment where the appeal, accessibility, promotion and the use of cigarettes are being rapidly reduced. So uh, it goes on basically to say that advertising of electronic cigarettes could be a good thing. Now, I think that is pretty much at odds with what the FDA have been saying, isn't it? Mm. And, yeah. uh, and it's certainly at odds with what the EU are saying. Because uh, <laughs> maybe this is a good, chan a good time to link uh, over to Clive Bates's blog uh, and just tie those two things together. Uh, yesterday, January the 18th, he did, uh, you might remember a couple of weeks ago, just after the trialogue process finished, he, he actually spelled out what the actual proposals look like. Uh, well, yeah. yesterday he did an update to that post. Uh, in his words, it is based on the cleaned up TPD text to be considered at MV on the 22nd of January. And um, the the uh, the bits uh, pertaining to advertising in there basically say that commercial communications with the aim or direct or indirect effect of promoting electronic cigarettes, blah, blah, blah. Basically, all advertising and promotion is banned. And that includes uh, VTTV and it includes potentially paying to get into a vape fest uh, or buying a raffle ticket or a vape, at a vape fest and all kinds of things. So, I mean, it's 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 an interesting take, isn't it? I mean, it does seem actually a long way apart. And it makes me wonder how, how different governments or di different sort of health bodies can come to such different conclusions. Well, it, it, it does, doesn't it? I mean, but we haven't exactly seen the best of the advertising, which could put, you know, explain a lot why these people think the way they do. Um, some of the adverts we've seen from big tobacco companies leave a lot to be desired. Some of them are quite good, quite funny. Um, but they're all of the same ilk at the moment and um, we need to see a bit of diversity we need to see some of the um the ego type e suits you know being promoted and advertised because at the end of the day without advertising we put a halt on innovation don't we um indeed yeah yeah that is so important i mean in the the five years since it's taken off in the uk it's the advertising that is done within the forums has helped. But, I mean, they're even looking to stamp out that. So how does the industry progress? It's well, not going to, is it? it? Of course it's not. And, 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 and you know, let's be honest, uh, they, it, to, to, to ban the advertising of e-cigarettes uh, is basically to brand them uh, as bad, isn't it? That's that's the yeah. point, and they don't want anybody promoting it. Uh, I mean, the, the the whole. If I just flick back to the Clive Bates thing, the whole thing is incoherent. Um, but the advertising bit is something that that you know uh, particularly sort of irritates me because it just confirms that they don't want people to use these things. Because you know, that, otherwise, why would you buy, ban advertising? You know. Um, but <laughs> just on the subject of Clive Bates, uh, he. he he did a breakdown. Oh, that, that was uh, the advertising bit that I just mentioned there. But there's also a section uh, about leaflet packaging and warning. And uh, so yesterday, Clive wrote this bit about uh, saying that uh, refill containers include a leaflet with information instructions for use on storage, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then there's a bit about uh, listing the ingredients uh, and so on and so on. Now, I read through that and I thought, yeah, that's pretty much what we heard. Uh, but somebody somebody picked up uh, on something. And today, uh, they obviously got in touch with Clive because today uh, he's done an update to this uh, and he's uh, he's got a blog post today called Fiasco. <laughs> E-liquid and e-cigarette flavour labelling to be banned. And Clive's comment is, whoops, a comment left by Godek, whoever Godek is, on, on the article we were just looking at. I, I really wish I could show you this, but I can't. Um, uh, spotted the following in the text 
of 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 yesterday's article basically and and it, it highlights it it says uh it's under Arti article 18 paragraph 4 it says member states shall require manufacturers and importers to ensure that and then the relevant bit is unit packages and any outside packaging of electronic cigarettes and refill containers and then you have to go down to the next bit because it's like sub paragraph 2 of b or 4 sort of thing and it says, do not include elements or features referred to in Article 12, with the exception of Paragraph 1A of Article 12 concerning the nicotine content. It says, then cross-reference to Article 12, which controls description on tobacco products, and is written to support the ban on flavours in tobacco products. So <laughs> and that says, the labelling of a unit packet and any outside packaging in the tobacco product itself shall not include any element or feature that promotes a tobacco product or encourages its consumption by creating an erroneous impression about its characteristics, health, has, health effects, hazards or emissions. Label shall not include any information about nicotine tar or carbon monoxide content and then refers to taste, smell, any flavourings or other additives or the absence thereof. So to use Clive's uh, words, oh dear. <laughs> As uh -huh. this... Article 12.1c is not exempted in the reference from 18.4b. It looks like it will be legal to add any element or feature to e-cigarette or refill container packaging that refers to flavourings, even though flavourings will be permitted unless banned by member states. <laughs> Ridiculous. Isn't well, it? isn't it? Isn't it? Doesn't it just typify the whole pigging process? I used I used the word pigging then because you're here, Chris, and um, it. The whole thing is a farce, isn't it? A close word it's fiasco. absolutely nuts. Go on, go on, Dave, have a rant. Go for I, it. I, I can't have a rant because I, will, I won't be able to use pigging. <laughs> 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 I just... It, it is literally absolutely nuts. It's confusing as hell. Um, it's all over the place. They contradict themselves here, there and everywhere. And... I, for one, just don't understand it. And I think a lot of people are in the same boat. Who knows what the hell they're saying at the moment? Who, who, who really, who does know? I mean, it's it, it's just a farce. It really is. I mean, it can't, it can't, it can't go through, can it? It doesn't make sense, for God's sake. It doesn't. Exactly. <laughs> it sure. doesn't. <laughs> the things they're asking for are impossible. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't it make you worry how many things have gone through in the past that we haven't noticed? It does with this sort of stupidity in it. It does, and and things that are coming yep. still, like you know the war on sugar. So, oh, so yes. I saw a cracking tweet the other day saying war uh, hashtag uh, war on sugar is hashtag give peace a chance. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, there's certain <laughs> seeds now that gardeners can't buy. Why? That's scary, isn't it? Flowers, you know? Why? <laughs> what the hell is that about? <laughs> it's know? absolutely scary. Now... The FDA are declaring walnuts as drugs. What? What? Walnuts? Walnuts. How can a <laughs> walnut be a drug? <laughs> Apparently they have them sold. I don't know what you've got oh, to do with them. Oh dear! But walnuts, and you think, what kind of stupid world are we living in? <laughs> right, we must be approaching the end. But there's a couple more things that we've just oh, got to tick are, off. Yeah. yeah, we've just on, got then. to cover them off. All right, the first one is this Vivian Reading thing. So uh, oh. I think everybody knows that they held this Google Hangout thing with hash EU Deb 8, uh, which I had to get a child to translate for me, but apparently it's short for EU Debate. Yeah. And um, it. and <laughs> Vivian Redding, the Vice President of the EU Commission, was asked why she was banning e basically. And she said, no, no, we're not. Countries can if they want, but we're not. No, we're not. So I, just for a bit of fun before the show, I started a poll and I, I tweeted it a bit earlier. Uh, just, just just for fun. And I can't put it up in the screen the way I was going to do it. So I've got another plan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put Dave Malik up and then put the poll on top of him. Bye, Dave. See ya. And, uh, <laughs> and 
the question I asked therefore was uh, during the EU Deb 8 on Thursday 16th of January 2014 European Commission Vice President Vivian Reding claimed that the EU was not carrying out a ban on e-cigarettes with Article 18 of the TPD revisions do you believe that she was being sincere and was simply misinformed by her advisers or was she being dishonest in the face of criticism so I'll just uh, I think I'll just refresh that page as I did that yeah we've got 184 votes in total so that's not bad and it seems that 69% believe that she was lying through her teeth uh, whereas 31% believed it was just incompetence so that, there you go um, I don't know what do you think Chris, Chris liar Me? liar or idiot I think she was ill-informed. Um, I don't think she's incompetent for a minute. Um, I just think she had an awful lot of homework to do on so many subjects uh, that, like most of these politicians, she relies upon her advisors to give her the necessary information she's going to need. And there probably was some book standing on the other side of the camera going, tell them it is the read per. <laughs> they are, not, yeah, they're... I can actually picture that, but probably with a Belgian accent. Yeah, <laughs> it so... will be all right on the night. <laughs> but I, I don't think she's incompetent for a minute, and I don't think she was lying. It's... No, she, she, of course she, she's not me. stupid, but uh, I, I, my personal view on it is it doesn't matter. The poll's just a bit of fun there, but, but they, they, you know, it doesn't matter whether... Uh, by incompetent, I mean she was not appraised, uh, you know, not aware, she was not didn't appraised. know, you know, was not competent in the matter. Um, yeah. But um, it doesn't matter whether that was the case or whether she was lying. Uh, yeah, shouldn't put yourself in the firing line because they knew this was coming. <laughs> you know, I mean, they started the thing off, didn't they, by saying, yeah, we know the ECG users have got something to say. So, you know, more for yeah. her, basically, if it was and a lack of research. And they kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off, hoping they that did. all these vapours would go away. Yeah, which is a bit naive of them, I would say. <laughs> so, so we ain't going anywhere. Um, and right. that's got to take us to time. So I'm just going to round off uh, by reminding people that Chris Choi, who you will remember, was a guest on VT Talk a couple of months ago, before Christmas it was. Uh, he's putting together uh, a show. That show is going out on ITV on Thursday night. That's the 24th of January at 730 23rd. 23rd. You're absolutely right. Sorry. I knew that, and I wrote down 24th. What a fool. The 23rd of January. Do yeah. we think this was a... If you want to watch it on the 24th, it'll be on their catch-up service. <laughs> or was he ill informed? <laughs> no, I'm just stupid. <laughs> I just can't write down numbers anymore. Uh, it's They've got it, the rise of the e-cigarette. And uh, 7.30 to late on a Thursday, the 23rd of January. So I'm hoping I'm going to be back from the airport in time to watch that live. But even better than that is an hour after that finishes, Chris Choi will be a guest live on a VT Talk, where I assume that he'll be talking to Dave Dawn about the programme. Um, we don't know how... The, we haven't seen the programme. Uh, it's uh, we've no idea whether it's going to be balanced or biased in either direction. We just don't know. Uh, so personally, I can't wait to see it. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. But we've got to get off air now. So I'm going to say, I'll go over to Davey so he can say good night. Say good night. Good night, everyone. And to Chris. Good night, everyone. Good night. And from all three of us, see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.
sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box.